Hello, hello, hello. Kevin Epps here, Digital Brilliance Hour, with another tutorial and a lesson. By now, you have an idea of how to use the OpenBOR documentation and manual. Because using this from here on out will be key for your growth. There will be many features and functions that you'll come across in your journey. And the manual will definitely help you make sense of it all to properly make educated decisions on how you want to proceed. In the manual lesson, you got a brief overview of how scripting works and how scripting is read. There are the typical out of the box commands that are available to you. And then you have the opportunity to build custom scripts and functions to do other things. We already know that scripts are configured to house three predefined functions, main, on destroy, and on create. For more info on these functions, make sure to refer back to the lesson about the manual. What we'll talk about in this lesson is custom functions and how they are used in the game. So to get started, let's look at our script files in Sublime Text. And look at all the files inside of the scripts folder. And what we're gonna do is just double click and open scripts animation animation.c. I know, I know, I know. You know, first time looking at this is it looks overwhelming. So let's break down what we're actually reading so it's easier to piece together what the file is doing. So the code will always have three entity types. We have functions, which is a container of code and logic written to do a specific task. It can take in information, process it, and also return the result. Variables is an indicator or symbolic name for stored information. Logic is a process that takes data to manipulate it based on statements that rely on facts. So let's start with a function. Let's look at an example of one from lines three to 19. Here are some of the biggest clues that you're looking at a function. The fact that you see the word void along with a name to the right of it, some open and closed parentheses, some open and closed brackets with code inside. This is the basic structure of a function. So something to keep in mind. When you look at line three, we see the start of the function format. And the name of that function is called slam start. We won't focus on what it does, just how to recognize what things are. Because once you're able to iron that part down, comprehending the code will become much easier. So at line four, the declaration or the writing up of the function starts with the open bracket. There's a bunch of code inside, which we'll go over, but focus on line 19 for now. Notice the closing bracket. This markets the ending of the function declaration. Remember, there must be an ending to a beginning in everything in code. If the compiler doesn't recognize an end, everything breaks. And the brackets represent that state. It's like starting the first word of a sentence with a capitalized letter, which obviously signifies a new sentence, right? And putting a period at the end of the sentence, which represents the end of the sentence. The compiler, when reading the code, wouldn't know that you've opened or ended a function without those brackets. There are some languages out there that don't use brackets, but the understanding that something should signify the opening and ending of anything is the takeaway here. Now let's bring our attention to line six. Notice there's a void here as well, plus a name that identifies it. You then see an equal sign, then something to the right of it. Get local var. We'll go over each part. This is a variable declaration. Void is the type of variable or indicator holding certain information. The name of the variable is self. The equal sign represents us defining what will be stored in the variable name self. To the right of the equal sign is what will be stored. Many different things can be used to be stored. Strings, 
numbers, and even other functions. In our case, it's another function. The reason we know this is because of the two parentheses immediately beside get local var. That means that get local var is also a function, which means it has its own set of logic that runs code to return a value that will then be stored in the variable called self. You also should notice the string, which is a double quote, being held inside of the parenthesis. This is called a parameter, which is the information it's taking in to process. Notice how at the end of this, there's a semicolon. This represents the period of a sentence or a command. This lets the compiler know that it's done all it wanted to do in this line, and it's time to go to the next line to process what's declared. Another variable called target is also declared at line seven. Now, let's go ahead and focus on lines nine through 13. You should notice if in line nine, any statement that begins with an if, else, or else if is a conditional statement. That means the code declared for it will execute when certain conditions are met. Also notice at lines 10 and 13 that there are open and closed brackets, just like with functions. That means that code inside of those brackets belong to this conditional. This condition is using an if statement in this case. The statement is what's declared inside of the open and closed parenthesis. A conditional statement uses operators to articulate what it's trying to say. So in our case, the double equal sign is an operator. This operation means to see whether or not two values are equal to each other. So in our case, this if statement is checking to see if the target value is equal to null. If it is, then it will run the code inside the brackets. At lines 15 through 18, there's another if statement that checks to see if target is not equal to null. The exclamation equal is an operator as well, where the exclamation means not to see if the two values don't equal each other. The exact opposite of lines nine through 13. So we've read through a function. The function type is declared to be a void type. We will go over these in the workshop. I have also included a reference sheet to help with different terminology. Now let's look at a function that takes in data and returns data. Let's look at lines 767 through 784. And we'll focus on the two lines 767 and 783 for now. At line 767, we notice there is a void function called spawner2. Inside of the parenthesis, there are variables shown inside. There are five different variables declared, all with their own variable type. They are separated or delimited by a comma. This is how the compiler knows that this function can take in five different variable data. First, there's vname, which is a void. Then we have four float variables, fx, fy, fz, and count. The variable names will be referred to in the function to represent the data that's took in. Like at line 778, you can see four of those variables used in another function. Again, we're focusing on being able to recognize the format of how code typically looks to help with readability. This leads to being able to better code. Lastly, line 783, there's a return statement. That means that anything that calls out to this function receives what's been given to the vspawn variable at line 778. So not only does this function take in data, it processes it to give process data back. Functions are very helpful to optimize code and also the speed of the runtime. Think of a function to be like a calculator. 
You plug in numbers and operators and the calculator gives you back your answer. So just take a look through animation.c just to get familiar with how things are formatted. See if you're able to figure out how many functions are declared in this file. Next, we'll have a quick quiz on how to do just that. Of course you are. I'm Kevin Epps. Be blessed and stay brilliant. See you soon. Peace. We hope you're learning what you can from these free tutorials. Again, if you feel you need more in-depth or extensive services or extra help with learning and getting the most out of this and don't want to wait on the videos, please feel free to join our DBH community for only $5. That doesn't mean you can't ask questions on here though. So if you have any comments or questions, please feel free to post those. Like and share this playlist for those who may need it. At the end of the day, we just want to help people build their engineering and coding skills to be efficient wherever they want to go. I'm Kevin. Appreciate you watching and be brilliant. Peace.